pregnant with a fibroid, what to expect? Hello, my name is Dr. Selva. I am a consultant obstetrician and gynecologist at Makuta Medical Center, Malacca, Malaysia. Many patients who have fibroids get pregnant. In this video, I will explain what you can expect when you are pregnant with a fibroid. Before I proceed, let me show you the different types of fibroids. Fibroids can be submucous, intramural, subserous, pedunculated, or cervical. If you are pregnant, it's highly unlikely that you have a submucous fibroid or a large intramural fibroid. The chances are you have small intramural fibroids or subserous fibroids. Most of the time, nothing happens and your pregnancy progress well and you will deliver your baby normally. However, some patients with fibroids may encounter these problems. There are basically two different types of miscarriages. The first is that the fetus dies in the gestational sac. This is called missed abortion. It is usually due to an abnormality in the fetus. The second is when you start bleeding and your fetus is still alive. This is called threatened abortion. Women with fibroids have a higher chance of developing threatened abortion and you may expel your fetus. The reason is that fibroid may cause the uterus to become irritable, causing contractions that leads to threatened abortion. In a normal pregnancy, the head of the fetus is usually located in the pelvis because this is the largest part of the uterus. When a fibroid is located especially in the lower part of the uterus, just above the cervix, the fetus will not be able to sit in its usual position. As a result, the fetus may sit in a transverse position or the fetus may be in the bridge position whereby the buttocks of the fetus is on the lower part of the uterus. As a result of this, your chances of undergoing a caesarean section is higher. As the fetus grows, the uterus enlarges. In the presence of a fibroid, the uterus will be larger. The uterine muscles will assume that the smaller fetus has reached maturity and will start to contract, thus leading to a preterm labor. You may need to rest in bed for a long period of time and given medications to suppress the contraction so that you will not deliver early. Despite such medications, you may still go into labor and deliver the baby prematurely. Preterm premature rupture of membranes occurs when the water bag bursts before you go into labor. There is a higher chance of this happening in pregnant women with fibroids. During pregnancy, fibroids can undergo changes called degeneration. Degeneration may be a result of decrease in blood supply to the fibroid. This can result in pain at the site of the fibroid. As a result, you will be given mild painkillers. It is not possible to remove fibroids during pregnancy and you may have to live with the pain until delivery. Abruptio placenta means that your placenta tears away from the wall of the uterus before your baby is delivered. It's very serious because your baby won't get enough oxygen and you can have heavy bleeding. You could go into shock. Ongoing studies seem to show that pregnant women with fibroids have a much greater chance of placental abruption than women without fibroids. If you go into labor with a fibroid, there is a higher chance of an obstructed labor. This means the fibroid may block the smooth passage of the baby through the cervix and out of the vagina you have a higher chance of undergoing an emergency caesarean section. Following a normal delivery, patients with fibroids have a higher chance of developing heavy bleeding called postpartum hemorrhage. The fibroid may cause the uterus not to contract properly, causing heavy bleeding. The usual way of performing a caesarean section is to make a transverse incision in the lower part of the uterus. However, if the fibroid is blocking that area, the doctor might choose to do a midline incision on the uterus. This is called a classical caesarean section. This is easy to perform to deliver the baby. However, the disadvantage of this incision is that there is a higher risk of uterine rupture during the next pregnancy compared to the normal transverse incision at the lower uterine segment. Another common question asked by my patient is that, can the fibroid be removed at the time of caesarean section? Generally, we do not remove fibroids during a caesarean section. 
The reason is that during pregnancy, the uterus is enlarged and very vascular. Performing a myomectomy at this time can be dangerous as it can cause heavy bleeding which may lead to a hysterectomy. Our advice is to deliver the baby first and then wait for about 3 months so that the uterus becomes normal size and then perform the myomectomy. Only in exceptional cases when the fibroid is blocking the area where incision is done during a caesarean section or if the fibroid is pedunculated will the fibroid be removed during a caesarean section. Thank you for watching this video. Please click like and subscribe to this channel. I'll be answering many questions regarding women's health in this channel. Bye.